ladies and gentlemen from St. Petersburg, Florida, please welcome Danielle Collins. From Puerto Rico, it's Monica Pui. Well, everybody values and covets the opportunity to compete at the highest level of their chosen profession. You could be in any sort of endeavor and want to be up against and compete with the best. It doesn't have to be sport, but certainly sport is the primary area where we often sort of associate this sort of action. For this day, Danielle Collins has that opportunity. She has found her way into the main draw of the first premier mandatory event of 2017, and she's up against Puerto Rico's golden girl in doing so. Not of a lot of experience from the Florida native. Collins ranked 248 in the world, but she will covet the chance to get out there, hit, and compete on this opening day of the 2017 BMP Paribas Open. Once again, a warm welcome, tennis fan. We're happy to have you alongside for what we anticipate will really most likely be a chance for Puig to find excellent form and be able to move through the second round. But Sophie, then again, we also know that's why you lace them up, you step out on the court and you compete because you just don't know what can happen. And who's to say that Collins can't create some disturbance here in any Wells? Well, and I'm sure, you know, Monica Puig is probably a bit worried in the fact that she really doesn't know this player very much. And, uh, you know, some homework can be done, but uh, until you really face someone you've never played and, uh, you know, you see them really on the tour, it's very hard to tell what really is their uh, weakness or their strengths but this uh, this tall woman is uh, definitely has some strengths in the sense of uh, first I think her first serve is uh, pretty flat and she can probably give uh, some problems for Monica Pupuy here today and uh, it's it's the nerves that are going to play for her because uh, it's new it's new territory and uh, you know it's it's different feeling when you go from you know being in school and college and then changing into the pro level and the pro tour but uh, I think she's very excited uh, of being here. Who wouldn't be, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Why not? One of the premier destinations for tennis in all the world. Uh, one of the biggest events for the women in particular. One of four premier mandatory events on the season. A couple of appearances at the U.S. Open. Really just a minimal amount of match play at the WTA main draw level. We'll chronicle that as the match unfolds. But first things first, business to attend to at the net court. Six balls, ball change is 7-9. We're using Hawkeye on this court. So if you want to challenge, please do it in a timely manner, especially between first and second serve. Preferably say challenge so I don't miss it. Same if you want your coach, please say coach. And we have TV changeovers on this court, so please stay seated until I call time. Any questions on that? No? Your choice. Tails or heads? Heads, please. Heads? Tails. Serve? Okay. Um, that's it. Yeah. Monica Pui, the golden girl from Puerto Rico. Yeah, you have to favor the experience, uh, you know, as, as it happened earlier when Flipkins beat uh, Cece Bellis. It was all about experience. And, uh, but she's, you know, Monica Pui is searching for that, you know, that great run that she had in the Olympics and uh, still searching for those wins. Uh, I mean, she's a great player, amazing backcourt, you know, position, loves, you know, loves to come forward to use her forehand inside out as well. I mean, you know, the lack would be maybe a little a bit of a serve, you know, the second serve, which I would I would expect somebody like Danielle Collins to have done her homework. And I'm sure she's seen her play because if you're in tennis, you've watched the Olympics. If you watch the Olympics, you only saw that woman who was uh, so exceptional uh, last August. So I think that, you know, the advantage for, you know, Collins would be to probably jump on her second serve. Uh, but uh, for Puig, it's going to be trying to stay consistent, see what the little, you know, the new Palmer is, is going to do, uh, you know, on the stage that she's never been into. Semifinalist at Doha Games, the Puerto Rican native, makes her home in Miami, Florida, site of the next premier mandatory event. Also from Florida, St. Petersburg, just up the left coast of the peninsula that hangs down from the southern United States is 23-year-old Danielle Collins. If you haven't heard of her, well, let's give you a little bit of information. She's 205 ranking spots 
below her opponent today. She only has two career main draw matches have been, been played at the U.S. Open 2014 and 2016. Sophie lost both of those. Really uh, not a lot of play at this level that can be daunting in some respects. But then again, for Collins, this is a no-lose situation. She's not expected to do much today. Uh, she has absolutely nothing to lose. She's one of the wall cards here in the tournament. There were eight wall cards, if I'm not mistaken, and seven of them went to American players. And, That's uh, correct. You know, she's she's definitely, she's you know, she won the NCAA twice, uh, in 2014 and 2016, I'm, I'm pretty sure, uh, as a uh, as a player, which is pretty amazing already as a record, and uh, from I think University of Virginia. Uh, so she, you know, she definitely has a lot of play under her belt, but it's different. It's, you know, the pro tour and college tennis is, is totally different, but it's huge experience. And she mentioned it, you know, if you, uh, if you have a chance to look at some of her interviews, she talks about the fact of the experience. Collins, the fact that she won two NCAA titles, uh, the, only the seventh woman to be able to do so, and she was collegiate woman athlete of the year last year. It gives her something of confidence, but again, how is the adjustment from that level to the speed, the, the drain of traveling week in, week out, trying to make main draws. How does that affect the transition from one level to another? Well, I think when you go to school and you have to play tennis, there's a lot of pressure, a lot of tiredness. You travel to with your team. I mean, it is different because obviously you're playing players who probably don't give you as much on the court. I mean, the unforced error are reduced. I mean, they're more study as legion aspect of tennis, which I'm sure it's a big help. Yeah, we're starting to see more and more success by collegiate players as they take that little extra time, maybe not ready and don't want to get a sort of burnt out, not getting the results. But nonetheless, for Monica Puig, she knows she has experience on her side playing for her 94th career main draw win. WTA Tour against a player who's playing just her third match overall and has yet to produce a victory. So we'll see how that bears out for the result on this day that does see one of these two players move through, move on to face the woman in the top spot of the draw, Karolina Pliskova, runner up at the U.S. Open last year in fine form already this season with two titles to her credit. But that's for another day, two days away to be exact. Today, under the sun, Puig and Collins battle next at the BMP Paribas Open.